tried to fix my camera to see if I could capture it on tape. It's rumored she had a tear the day public access left the building. The city had Rico Suave here at it before the closing to cheer her up and give her the news. I can only imagine what he whispers in her ear. There's just no funding. But her eyes still reminisce and wonder who will carry the torch. Public access was a model of, uh, of the classical marketplace of ideas, you know, like a libertarian's dream. Well, I think we would all love to see public access back in Columbus again, but realistically, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I, I really just don't think the city would ever give the money needed to have that happen. I don't think they're um, interested in having public access television in Columbus again. Views and opinions expressed in this intro do not represent those of Alliance Community Media, The Carriage House, and definitely not the creator of the short. Not a substitute, but a monster of its own, says Susan Halpern, when asked if The Carriage House was replacing the void left when public access was shut down. Bob is inside to tell us more. We moved in here in 2008. Uh, at a dollar a month, the place was about to be looted and they were worried about it, so the free press moved in primarily as security, and we actually had someone who lived here uh, for about a, a year uh, to secure the carriage house and to keep the mansion from being looted. Uh, while we were living here, the market melted down and the cost of the house was cut in half, so Suzanne and I decided to uh, buy it after the market collapsed. So we now live in the main house and uh, this is just donated space to uh, media uh, groups, nonprofits. Okay, you've now entered <laughs> the waiting area of the carriage house. Again, it's a uh, communal property. At this point, we have no staff. Everyone here is, in fact, uh, volunteers. As you come in the carriage house, uh, you'll see a variety of offices. Uh, also uh, donated uh, art from different uh, causes and movements. Uh, but this is the studio of WCRS. WCRS was a, is a low-powered FM station, an actual broadcast station. Uh, I do a show here, and many other uh, shows are done. Uh, we originate uh, local broadcast. It's a timeshare with another low-powered uh, station out of Bexley, Ohio. But uh, we do live shows here. Uh, we have call-in capacity. And uh, essentially, they moved in here in many ways because their original group that had the license uh, was having trouble uh, in this economy. So uh, we offered them free space here uh, at the Carriage House. Uh, and again, my show is Fight Back, same one I used to do on public access uh, television. Uh, over here, and you've already talked to Susan, is the Film Council of Greater uh, Columbus. That's their office. I serve on their board as their general council. Uh, and uh, they, in this economy, had uh, one of those uh, tough questions, whether you uh, uh, lay off all your staff, which was down to one, or... Uh, or pay for an office. Uh, over here uh, is where we do a variety of productions. You can see the, uh, uh, the uh, Mac there and uh, some others. But we, a lot of video production has come out of here. Uh, I used to do vlogs uh, uh, regularly here on various uh, topics. And then as we come this way, this is the free press office. This is the office of the Free Press, but uh, both the, this office and next door, which are nominally under the control of the Free Press, are used uh, communally as needed by groups. Okay, go ahead. Well, we're upstairs in the carriage house. This is the uh, new iMac lab and classroom that uh, we all share. Um, I'm, of course, with the Columbus Film Council, the Columbus International Film and Video Festival, and we do workshops up here. And so far, um, since these are all kind of new for us, we've done a WordPress workshop on these. Uh, we're doing digital storytelling next month on these. And in this space, we've done script writing classes, camera classes, 
how to produce a movie class and uh, WordPress classes. So it's a really useful space for us and we like it a lot. Uh, the Carriage House is an interesting collection because it's all these different nonprofits that work together on things like this lab. For instance, I think Indie Media got the, the IMAX donated and the Film Council is putting some software that we bought on them and people like Miles, who's an independent artist but is also connected to Free Geek and WCRS, come up here and work. Um, so we all kind of do our own thing but we also pool resources and work together. Oh, God, there was a television studio, three-camera studio, and there were cameras you could check out, and there was editing gear. This was pre-digital, though, so everything was analog. Um, I used to go in there and use the studio, actually, and do what, what they used to call online editing through the switcher board. Um, and it's basically where I learned the skills that, was, that enabled me to go get a job. I, you know, I didn't really learn them in film school. I actually learned them through public access television. I love showing movies. Uh, I love film, and I love watching people learn how to make film. I mean, I love the whole thing. I'm just enamored with the whole process, and I think it's like one of the best ways to communicate with people. So I guess that's what keeps me going. I don't know. People tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> I just keep doing it. I mean, it's like, why do people make access television? It's because they love doing it. It's the same thing. Despite the Access Center's closure, it's encouraging to see the adaptation and transformation that has taken place, thanks in great part to the Carriage House. So I took a step back, and I looked at the bigger picture. There's hope in those eyes.